Okay, so today I thought I'd talk a little bit about how to lose weight as a diabetic. Um, and I'll just introduce myself first. My name's Ben, uh, I'm a second year medical student. And, um, and because of that, uh, don't take this advice as medical advice. It should never um, come on top of advice that you're given by your personal doctor or a professional doctor. Um, I haven't uh, finished med school yet. Having said that, I am a type 1 diabetic. Uh, I do bodybuilding as a passion, not professionally. Um, I have struggled in the past quite a lot uh, with losing weight. Um, and a couple of reasons for that was I didn't really understand how a diabetic could lose weight. Um, it seemed to me that every time I reduced the amount of food that I was eating, I would have a low. Uh, or every time I upped the amount of exercise that I was doing, I would have a low. And uh, obviously every time you have a low, you have to treat that with um, taking some kind of sugary food, uh, which kind of goes against the whole point of losing weight because I, I ended up having to eat more sugary food than I was eating before. So I think a lot of people kind of struggle. Uh, I've seen some stuff online about, you know, diabetics. Uh, struggling with the same thing, especially those who are on insulin, like me. And uh, and so I thought I'd, I'd share some stuff that I've discovered through my medicine course and some stuff that I've discovered through talking to my own dietitians and things that I've discovered sort of just through trial and error myself. So the first thing is the kind of general principles of losing weight. The basics of that is you use as a person a certain amount of calories per day. So let's say for me that might be 2,500 and you can calculate roughly how much you will be burning uh, yourself online using a calculator um, and I'll, I'll try and link one of those for you in the description box. Basically you, you will burn a certain amount of calories per day, uh, that's just the amount of energy that your body needs to survive and um, in order to put on weight you eat in excess of those number of calories you eat. Let's say you burn 2,500 calories in a day. If you eat 2,600 or 2,501 or 3,000, you will put on weight. And in order to lose weight, you will need to eat under that amount. So that's called a calorie deficit. So for me, if I wanna lose weight, I wanna be eating roughly 2,300 rather than 2,500, but, as a diabetic, if you reduce the amount of food that you are eating, you will have a low. So, what you have to do as a diabetic is you reduce the amount of calories that you are eating, and you can use something like a calorie counter to do that. I use my Fitness Pal, which is an app. Uh, you can use that for free. There's a couple of amazing things about that. You can scan foods like the barcode on the back of a packet and it'll tell you how many calories are in there and you can add it in straight away. It also tells you how many carbohydrates are in there, which is really good for people who inject insulin like me. But what you do is you, you will calculate how many calories you're eating a day and reduce that by uh, roughly 200 calories. As I said, 2,500 roughly down to 2,300 for me. You're gonna have to work that out for yourself. Um, and then you will have lows uh, and you need to preempt that by slightly reducing your overnight insulin. Uh, so most people, most diabetics will be taking at least two insulins. Uh, one of those will be a, a short acting insulin and some of those will be a, a long acting insulin. And uh, I found that I had to reduce my uh, long acting insulin. Basically, uh, your body uh, gets uh, used to the amount of food that you're eating over a certain period of time. Uh, I think it's around two weeks on average, but it could be, you know, a month. Uh, it could be more than that. Um, that's a rough ballpark. And so uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to reduce the amount of calories that you eat, reduce the amount of insulin that you take, and then in a couple of weeks, you will start to see a reduction in the amount of weight that you are losing. So let's say I lost a kilogram, that's you know just a random amount. But let's say you lost a kilogram in that first week. In a month's time, I might not be losing anything by having 200 calories less, 
or I might be uh, losing half a kilogram and that might be fine with you but um, what you're going to need to do is reduce the amount of calories that you're eating again and reduce the amount of insulin that you're taking again. Now a note that I should you know make sure that you guys are aware of is as you um, get smaller as you become a smaller person uh, because you are losing fat uh, you will need less insulin as well so you may find that you need to reduce your ratio of uh, short acting insulin so if you are taking one to ten units uh, so one unit for every 10 uh, grams of carbohydrate you may need to move that to one to uh, 15 grams of carbohydrate and that's basically the principles so a couple of things to help you out is exercise so exercise will play a minor factor in losing weight so it's not nearly as effective as just reducing the amount of food that you eat but increasing the amount of exercise that you do can play a role uh, you're going to have to play around with uh, changing your insulin to facilitate that and you're also going to have to play around with maybe eating a banana or something in between times. The other thing that you should consider doing is reducing the amount of carbohydrates that you eat. So carbohydrates are the main fuel source of a person but they give diabetics uh, sugar spikes you know they, they give anyone sugar spikes but in particular diabetics uh, it gives you a, a sugar spike your blood raises your blood sugar levels and that can be difficult to calculate so uh, one thing that you can do is reduce the amount of carbohydrates that you eat and by reducing the amount of carbohydrates that you eat you reduce the chance of getting a injection amount wrong so the smaller the amount of sugar that you have in your body the lower the chances of you getting your insulin wrong and therefore the lower the chances of you having a low and therefore the chances of you needing to eat more sugar uh, is reduced another thing is that carbohydrates are also quite calorie dense so there's a lot of calories per gram of carbohydrates compared to something like protein so in order it goes fat being the most calorie dense and then carbohydrates and then protein now it would be wrong to say that one particular thing is your enemy so it would be wrong to say that carbohydrates is your enemy it would be wrong to say that protein is your enemy and it would be wrong to say that fat is your enemy so do not cut out just one thing now there's lots of people who try to sell this concept as a general rule now so things like the keto diet where you cut out all carbohydrates capitalizes on the concept that carbohydrates are your enemy and then you know historically there was a lot of movements that said fat is your enemy now, uh, with these kind of radical diets, uh, there's quite a lot of evidence to suggest that they have a good short-term benefit. So they improve weight loss uh, in the short term, but then by about a year, people tend to relapse. In fact, the only sort of radical diet that seems to have had any long-term evidence uh, for improving and maintaining is the mediterranean diet so it's better to kind of stay clear of these weight loss programs and stuff because they don't really offer much instead it's better to just sort of calorie count and also to just practice saying no to things i think that's sort of the main the main thing that people struggle with so for example i, I know it can be really really scary or really really hard at the start especially when people say you need to do this 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 and this to lose weight it can be quite off-putting but by doing simple things by let's say that you're a person who eats your three meals and then you have quite a lot of snacks in between you could start off by just reducing the number of snacks that you eat 
or you could start off by reducing the calories in the uh, snacks that you eat. So let's say normally you'd go for a packet of biscuits. Maybe you could go for a packet of low calorie crisps. After you've done that for a while and that seems okay, maybe you could swap those low calorie crisps for a banana. And then after that, you could maybe try and not eat the snack at all uh, in between meals. And it's just practicing little changes by that that in the short term might not make a massive difference, but in the long term make a huge difference. So another thing that I'd say about losing weight is that it is not a short term investment. It's not a, it's not, it's not something that you can start doing one day and then a month be done. You know, those things that say, I'll give you a six pack in three months. It's that, you know, that that's just not how it works. It's a very long term investment. So minor gains over a long period add up to lifelong benefits rather than, you know, massive changes at, at the start might mean that you lose weight like that but then very quickly relapse and and quite what they found is that with a quite a lot of people who relapse they tend to relapse even further so they tend to get even more put on even more weight than they had before the other thing about doing more exercise is that when you do more exercise it has a lot more benefits for your health than just losing weight. They found that actually when you lose weight it can have better health benefits for you than giving up smoking in the short term. The sort of exercise that you might want to try doing is things which are low impact. So let's say you never go for a run. I wouldn't suggest suddenly taking up running. What I'd suggest doing is a sport that maybe you used to enjoy or you still enjoy but don't do that often maybe try and do it more often maybe try and do something with friends so let's say your friends go um, play tennis and you used to love playing tennis when you were younger maybe join a tennis club that your friends go to and um, you know playing with them or perhaps you could uh, let's say you cycle once per week maybe find the time to start cycling twice per week and then increase it to three times per week. But it, doing one really intense run every two weeks or once every week is not nearly as beneficial as going for a 30 minute walk every day. So moderately intense working out or exercise is way more beneficial if you do it for 30 minutes like a de uh, uh, 30 minutes a day compared to uh, doing it once per really high intense exercise once per week. By and large, you want to make small changes uh, over a long period of time and be confident and be determined and stick to the rules and you know don't make huge changes that are going to be really hard to keep up. Um, and that's the best way that I found and it's worked for me so far. Um, another thing that I found can be quite challenging is let's say, as I, as I said before, let's say uh, I my body takes 2,500 calories a day to maintain my weight and then I reduce it by 200 calories uh, for a couple of weeks and I go down to 2,300 and then I'm not losing weight at 2,300 anymore. And so the next week I go down to 2,100. Uh, and then two weeks later I go down to 1,900. And then let's say I go all the way down at that pace to 1,500 calories. And at 1,500 calories, I feel awful. Let's say I feel really sluggish and really hungry all the time. So one thing that you can do is you can eat uh, another 200 calories on top of that again so i was at 1500 and let's go to 1700 and then 1900 and that allows your metabolism to shift again and get used to that new amount of food without putting making you put on uh, any weight or, or, or much weight and you do that for like a month and then you start to slowly go down again so if it's a graph 
you'll lose a lot of weight at the start in the first week because you lose a lot of water weight because glycogen, one of the uh, best stores of energy in your body, um, holds a lot of water in it so when you use that glycogen you lose a lot of water as well so you'll lose a lot of water uh, weight here and then it will slowly decline and then uh, it might flatten out and then it might decline again and then once it's sort of reached another plateau maybe you start eating a tiny bit more so you slightly go up and then you start losing weight again <laughs> and then eventually over a long period of time even though it's you know you've maybe you've gone up slightly once or twice or three times or ten times over the course of that period you will have lost a lot of weight now because with weight loss there is that sort of up and down pattern on a daily basis when you look in yourself in the mirror or when you weigh yourself you might lose motivation um, because you are not really seeing you're not seeing any changes you might see just ups and downs and think to yourself oh this is really upsetting um, and that's a big problem because you by looking yourself every day you don't see the overall big picture um, it's people on the outside who are going to notice the big picture you might look at yourself every day and go oh, I'm, I'm not making any progress I haven't made any progress this week but then someone who hasn't seen you in a few months might come up to you and say wow you've lost a lot of weight congratulations and it, it, it that because of that it's important that you don't go based off motivation but based off discipline and so rather than going like yeah i'm gonna smash it today i'm gonna lose weight today instead go based off okay i've, I've practiced you know not eating those snacks and now i'm just going to continue doing the same thing if you have any questions please do let me know again i want to reiterate that i am not yet a medical professional so this should not uh, take precedent over your uh, medical advice from a doctor and it's always best to consult a doctor or a dietitian or someone like that but if this gives you a bit of guidance and a good bit of help um, i'm glad i could be of use uh, please yeah let me know any questions in the comments section uh, or if you think I've got anything wrong please do let me know um, I'd love to have a community of people who, in my sort of following base who help each other out uh, and and I, I benefit from people telling me stuff too so please do that and um, yeah I hope you have a good rest of your day and good luck with your diet